Hey guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expat Podcast. My name is Mina and today we are doing a spinning video or at least this is probably going to be a part one to like a little mini spinning series that I'm working on. So a couple of years ago, actually more than a couple of years ago, it's probably soon after we moved into this house, it was almost three years ago, so probably two and a half years ago, I bought a box of fibre from um, World of Wool here in the UK. And I bought a bunch of Corydell tops in different colours. I think I got them in like 10 or so different colours. Oh, you, you can't see. I've got like a whole rainbow of colours um, in this box just off the camera. I'm pretty sure I shared this on the channel somewhere way back when. Um, I also have a bag of some fake cashmere tops, so essentially nylon, but it's super soft. And I also bought a big bag of Polworth whole worth top as well to use for this project and I wasn't I had a different idea in mind at the time when I um bought the fiber for what it was going to be used for anyway years have passed <laughs> clearly and I've decided to finally start doing something with this and I think I'm going to create um I'm aiming for something around a DK worsted weight sort of yarn um in terms of like thickness of the overall yarn um gonna go for like a bit of a thick and thin vibe let it kind of do its thing not be too precious about it not be too sort of concerned about uniformity with the spinning i really like that unevenness that comes with hand spun sometimes and in this case for this particular project i think it will look really well it will work really well um and so what i'm doing is i'm using my diy blending board which i will link a video for um if you're interested on how I made this. Um, the reason why I want a little bit of it, here's a different color, is because this side was covered with a basket and so this side was exposed to sunlight so it's faded a bit, but it still works perfectly fine. Not a problem at all. Um, and yeah, so I've started making these mini bats or these, yeah, I guess they're like little mini bats. They're the size of the blending board essentially um, to, to spin from. And what I've been doing is I've been blending the fiber with some cashmere top and then so this is a red with the cash with the fake cashmere top so the white and then i've done 50 50 red and orange with a bit of the cashmere top then just orange then 50 50 orange and like a golden yellow and then just the yellow and then now i'm going to do a bit of the golden yellow in this case is called sunset with buttercup and then i'll do one just buttercup and then buttercup and the next color etc etc going through it all um so in the end i should have i think 19 mini bats and i might do a little bit more of the red and then the last color which is the purple i might do another bat each of those of just a solid one so that anyway just to even it out at the ends we'll see um so that's the plan like i said i've already done the first five mini bats because I kind of just wanted to make sure that it was going to work. Um, I'm going to do a few more bats now on camera for you guys to see. I'll probably set it to music. I might do a little bit of like do some in real time with a bit of ASMR background sounds of like the fiber but then I'll set most of it to music on time lapse so you're not sat here for ages watching me do this and then um, once that's all done, we'll get to spinning some of it as well. Whether or not the spinning will be in this video, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll see. I'm planning on doing all the fiber prep first because I want to take a nice picture of my rainbow of bats um, at the end before I start spinning. And I haven't decided yet if I'm just going to um, sort of chain ply it to keep all the colors together, or if I'm going to spin the undyed Polworth top that I have as well as a single and then apply it together I haven't fully decided yet so let me know what you think because I probably won't have decided or done anything about it yet by the time I come to publish this video this first video do you think I should do the white as a single ply alongside a single ply of like the rainbow gradient or should I just chain ply the rainbow gradient on itself to keep just a more solid color without the white mixed in let me know your thoughts. Just to give you an idea of what it might look like with the white mixed in, I have these two break the, these two skeins that I did where I did that. So you can see one ply is the colour and the other ply is the white. So this is, gives you an idea of what that would look like if I did it that way. Um, and I do quite like it. I think it's quite it gives it a very interesting sort of look. 
but I can also see the advantage of just doing it chain plied as well so yeah let me know let me know what you think in the comments below on this video um because like I said I haven't made up my mind yet I know if I did it this way I'd get more yardage um over chain plying it so there is also that to consider and I think my plan is to make it into a blanket in which case it would probably be better to do it this way however I don't know I don't know uh let me know what you think and uh yeah I'll let you know what I decide in future videos all right I'm going to get everything set up now to get going so all I do for measuring out how much fiber I use I just use my sort of like wingspan my arm span so it's a bit hard to show on camera because I'm not on camera but I essentially just hold up the fiber at arm's length and that's roughly the right amount to fill the board once with a little bit of the cashmere top as well so when I do a blend I kind of just do half an arm's length of each color with some of this and when it's just a solid color I just do one full arm length like from one hand to the other um, spread out type of thing I hope that made sense I really don't know Pull out a bit like that. Put that out of the way. And I'll give it just like a half length. I don't know, I'm not being super accurate about this. It's kind of just feeling it as I go. And I do have leftovers of each of the colours. I got a 100 gram bag of each colour. And so I haven't used the full 100 grams of each one uh, yet. So if I did want to go back and make more bats, I can do that as well. Uh, there we go. And then a half of this yellow. There we go. So I'm going to set this up sideways I think on this table just to make it easier so hopefully this will look okay on camera because I'm going to be going this way rather than that way. That's not going to bother anyone is it? I hope that'll be alright. I mean you're still going to see it the same it's just um, directionally it's going to look different. Alright. I, I just like tearing off little chunks to do this so it's not too bulky
fibre off. I'm just using these knitting ne needles that I use when I make Rolags, but I'm not going to be doing Rolags today. So I'm just going to use this to help pull the fibre off and keep it together. out and then there's your mini bat as it were then all I do is fold it over into thirds and then again into thirds and there's the mini bat all right so I'm just going to add that into the order there we go bat number six and our rainbow is done all right i think i'm going to set up the rest of this on time lapse and i'll catch up with you guys at the end Hey guys, okay, so I'm back, it's a few days later. Um, I filmed some of the blending board stuff, but then after a while I was like, this is just gonna be very repetitive and boring, so I stopped filming it. But I wanted to show you, now that I've finished all of them, how cool does that look? I love it. Um, so yeah, it's my uh, collection of rainbow mini bats so there's 19 of them here and i also did two half size ones of the purple and the red um for either end just to kind of balance it out because um there's only two bats each of those with that color in anyway it makes sense in my head it's hard to explain so overall to, all together there's about 20 bats or 20 mini bats worth of fiber and on my blending board oh, it's back up there on top of that the cabinet um i i can usually blend around 30 to 35 grams of fiber total and i haven't weighed these bats so i don't know how much they how much they weigh but based on the amount of fiber i've used and i had 100 grams of each color i think i'm probably around that 35 gram mark for each of these mini bats in terms of how much fiber has gone into them um so yeah so that's quite a good amount of fiber to be spun i love it I'm so happy with that rainbow. Um, and just pop that in the background there so you, you can still see it. And I've actually, the first half, that half bat of the red, I have already spun that because I wanted to see how it would spin up and how it would feel. And I think, 
I know I asked earlier to let me know what you would do and what you think I should do, whether I should chain ply the colours and keep them in like just solid, solid-ish rainbow, or if I should do a two ply and ply it with this undyed Polworth. And I think I'm gonna do that because I want yardage over maintaining the colour. And I love barber poling in hand spun yarn, so this would give like uber barber pole throughout the whole thing. Um, as I shared, it would be similar to like this sort of skein. We got rainbow colours, but then it's plied with a neutral. Actually, it was some plain Polworth as well. So um, I think that's probably what I'm gonna do because I quite like the effect of that. It gives it a much lighter and area overall appearance to the yarn. And I don't know if I said what I was planning on doing with it, but I think I'm gonna do a blanket. And I haven't quite figured out what kind of pattern I'm gonna do or um, what, what that's gonna be yet. So, um, once I figure that out, <laughs> I will let you know, but I'll have plenty of time to think about it because I have a lot of spinning to do. And like I said, this is only part one of the spinning series. I will also share some of the actual spinning process. I might do a couple of videos for the spinning. I'll do one that's more of my usual style where it's like sped up, blog style, a little bit of chatter here and there, sort of showing how I'm spinning. And then I might do another one, which is just an, like a, maybe like 30 minutes of just ASMR of me spinning, no sound, no music, no talking, and just see how that goes. I, I know I did that once like a few years ago and some people liked it, some people were like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, well, it's not for you then if you don't like it. I know some people find that really soothing, just having something on in the background. Um, so, so yeah, I might do that just for anyone who is interested in that kind of video. Right, that's it. I'm gonna round out this video. Today is, what's the date, 24th of May. Um, we're away, so next week is half term here in the UK, or I guess it's like, like a mid it's basically a midterm break um and we're going to a wedding so we have a wedding next week it's my second cousin's wedding um or my cousin's daughter technically it's her wedding in the south of france so we're off to that and because it's a half term break we're going for uh we're going a few days before to kind of just make the most of the fact that we have the time Layla has the time off school and we can go for most of the week and then and then we're back for a week and literally the day we, we get back on the sunday then the Monday morning, Perry flies off to the US for a conference he's attending. And then he flies back the following Saturday. So I'm alone for the week with the girls. He flies back the following Saturday. And then Sunday, we're back at the airport again. And we're going to Greece for another week. And this time, it's my brother's wedding. He's getting married. And so, so yeah, um, it's just worked out that way. And it's just because, um, so my brother and future sister-in-law, they had been planning a destination wedding anyway so that was always going to happen and then um once we found out about my cousin's wedding um he decided because it's the same side of the family obviously so she's our cousin um a lot of the same people traveling for her wedding to attend her wedding would be traveling to attend my brother's wedding and so they decided to have their wedding pretty soon afterwards so that people wouldn't have to travel to Europe twice. We have a lot of, Amer we have so much family in America and Canada and like in other parts of the world. So a lot of people are flying in from there to Europe. And so it's a lot easier for people to justify hanging around for three weeks rather than doing two one week trips to Europe um, in one summer. So that's how that's worked out and actually a bunch of the bunch of family who are coming to both weddings are just going to go to Spain in between the two they're going to France and Spain and then they'll catch up with the rest of us in Greece but we're coming back because obviously Leila has to go to school and so she is missing a week of school to go to that I don't know why I'm explaining all of this this is all just blabber I guess I just feel like I haven't filmed a podcast or anything in a while and so I just feel like I need to chit chat anyway <laughs> Um, I will see you guys in the next one. I probably won't get to start filming the next part of this until after we get back. Um, not sure when the second part will go up. It might end up being after Greece. I don't know if I've mentioned it on here or not, but we've also had some not so great news about Derek. He's been having some health issues. And um, so yeah, we're gonna have some big decisions to make with regarding him. I'll talk more about that later, I think. I might even just do a little standalone quick video updating on Derek because I know you guys probably haven't seen the cats much on the video on the videos these days, but um but yeah, they're getting old. They're twelve and a half years old now. And um they both have arthritis and yeah, Derek's now having some complications as a result of his arthritis, as well as some other things going on. 
so unfortunately it is just one of those things that comes with the cats getting old so anyway like I said I'm not gonna get into that right now uh, we still are waiting for some answers so I don't want to say something I need to have to walk it back later all right I think the last thing I should mention because I know someone's gonna ask about it but my wall my door <laughs> I let Layla paint it um, a little while ago uh, she, I, we, I had some samples of like house paint, like uh, in different rainbow colours. I was going to do something with that, and it just never happened in the end. So I got those out for her one day with some brushes, and I let her have at the door. It's just a plain primed door; it's not been painted or anything. So I was like, you know what, just have fun with it. Um, and yeah, so she had fun painting that. She wants to come back and touch it up and add more to it one day. But um, yes, yeah, so if anyone wondering, that's that's Layla's artwork on the back there. All right. That's it for today. Thank you so much and I will see you guys in part two.